Right now, former President Trump says he would endorse a far-right state lawmaker if he ran for governor, what that could mean for the Republican primary. Also, a man accused of killing a Navy veteran changes his plea two weeks before his scheduled trial, when he's now scheduled to be sentenced. And project officials for a proposed Amazon facility take questions from those living in that area, why they say the facility would increase the value to the neighborhood. This is News 3 Now at 6. A new national report finds former President Trump has told an election denier in the state legislature that he'd back him if he ran for governor. The name Representative Tim Ramthan may not mean much to you, but as Naomi Coles explains, he's become the face of the farthest right wingers trying to overturn Wisconsin's election results. Ramthan has twice tried to overturn those 2020 election results, despite party leaders telling him that's illegal. But that's been enough to attract Trump's attention, who continues to say falsely that the 2020 election was stolen. Frankly, it puts us in, in dangerous territory. It's not uh, news when fringe politicians without institutional backing say they may run for governor. Until, that is, Trump tells them he would endorse them. That's the case for far-right wing state representative Tim Ramthun, according to an investigation from Rolling Stone News magazine. Ramthun, who was just disciplined by Assembly Speaker Robin Voss weeks ago. I'll have the right, even though every lawyer uh, that we have worked with in Wisconsin says we cannot undo the 2020 elections. Um, you know, Representative Ramthun has that belief. That's his right. Ramthun has twice tried to overturn 2020 election results. He's appeared on multiple far-right-wing shows that have peddled false conspiracy theories about the election. His presence in a Republican primary for governor likely wouldn't draw major party backing, but Trump's endorsement could shape the conversation. You know, if, if this is what the debate in the Republican primary is about, it's going to involve candidates trying to out extreme each other and, and taking more uh, more fringe positions and more extreme positions. And that, that that's not good for anybody. Current candidates Rebecca Clayfish and Kevin Nicholson have both said they want to dismantle the bipartisan GOP created Wisconsin Elections Commission. For Trump, still trying to overturn the 2020 election, that's not been enough. We, we are seeing in a sense of battle uh, for the future of the Republican Party. Ramthan has not responded to a request for comment on his conversations with Trump or a purported special announcement he has set for this weekend. Naomi, thank you. Let's check your certified most accurate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. It's a little chilly on the patio, but we should warm up tomorrow. Let's start out by taking a look at the time lapse from the Queen Bee Radio Skycam in Platteville. You can see hey, it's sunshine for much of the day today, just a few cirrus clouds moving in overhead, and then some clouds on the western horizon just before sunset uh, starting to move in. There's the light view from the Queen Bee Radio Skycam uh, and you can see partly cloudy skies there. Uh, there are some light snow showers the other side of Lake Michigan and downwind from Lake Superior up in far northern Wisconsin. Last night temperatures were generally in the single digits to the middle teens. Here in Madison we dropped to 14 degrees. High temperatures so far today in the lower to middle 20s. These temperatures are starting to drop off a little bit. Madison's down to 21 and a few places are in the upper teens but we'll probably stop the temperature fall around midnight uh, and wind chills right now really aren't much of a factor because the winds are pretty light. So look for temperatures to drop to the middle teens by around midnight and then temperatures will hold steady or even rise a little bit overnight. And that will set up a milder day tomorrow with a high temperature of 37 degrees. We could see some snow showers on Wednesday, but shouldn't amount to very much in the way of accumulating snow. I'll take a look at that and any additional chances for snow in the forecast in a few minutes. After two years of competency hearings and mental health treatment, the man accused of killing a Navy veteran is changing his not guilty plea. At a plea hearing this afternoon, 23-year-old Riley Berg pleaded guilty to first-degree intentional homicide. Prosecutors say Nicholas Day was out jogging on January 15th, 2020, when Berg shot him and cut his neck. The murder trial has been delayed multiple times due to competency hearings. Berg has gone between being found incompetent to stand trial to being competent and back again with treatment being ordered by a judge. Count, you are pleading to um, alleges that on or about Wednesday, January 15th, 2020, in the town of Blue Mounds here in Dane County, you did cause the death of NJD with the intent to kill him, and you did so when using a dangerous weapon. Do you understand the charge? Yes, Your Honor. 
Berg and Day did not know each other. The guilty plea carries a mandatory life prison sentence. Berg's next court appearance is April 4th. It will be discussed if he will be eligible for parole. During that time, the victim's family is expected to speak. The Sun Prairie man charged in a crash that killed a Madison officer's wife appeared in court today. Christopher Bloom is being charged with homicide by negligent operation of a vehicle and reckless driving, causing great bodily harm. The charges stem from a crash that killed 48-year-old Julie Nelson and left her wife Jody injured. A judge said Bloom's signature bond at $500 per case, citing a lack of criminal history. As a condition of the bond, Bloom is not allowed to operate a vehicle or have contact with Nelson's family. A status conference is scheduled for April 11th. A former Portage High School teacher pleading no contest to a felony sexual assault charge of a student, Abby Dibbs, was arrested last year in May. According to court documents, Dibbs, a former English teacher, told detectives that she and the male student had sex twice at her home. A judge sentenced Dibbs to three years probation and register as a sex offender. She's also not allowed to have any contact contact with the student. The Madison Police Department is clarifying its role in an officer involved shooting last week, emphasizing that its officers were only there to assist. In a statement, Madison Police Chief Sean Barnes said three MPD officers were assisting the Wisconsin Department of Justice on the city's east side when the shooting happened. Barnes said they were there to help the state's Division of Criminal Investigation make an arrest, but none of their officers fired their weapons or witnessed the shooting. The Dane County Sheriff's Office, which is investigating the shooting, has not clarified whether the suspect in that arrest was shot. They did say that suspect was taken to a hospital with injuries, though. This weekend, the family of Quadrin Wilson said Wilson was shot five times in the back during that arrest. No law enforcement agency has confirmed that to us at this point. We continue to ask questions and look for answers in this case. Madison police say they were called to the city's south side Saturday night after a person reported a child being left in a running car for nearly an hour. Officers visited the 2900 block of Coho Street off Fish Hatchery Road. In the car, they found prescription drugs and a BB gun within reach of the child. The child's mother was arrested on possible charges of child neglect, bail jumping, and being in possession of a controlled substance. A family member picked up the little girl from the scene. The Wisconsin DMV wants to warn you about a phishing scam. DMV officials say they received multiple reports of fraudulent text sent to people by someone claiming to be from the DMV. The texts were meant to get personal information like credit card or social security numbers. Following a link in the fraudulent messages led victims to a website that looked nearly identical to the DMVs. If you think that a message may be real, call or email the DMV to confirm or visit their website at wisconsindmv.com. Governor Evers is pardoning 25 more people today, bringing his total in office to 416. Governor Evers has granted more pardons than any other governor in contemporary history. Republican Governor Scott Walker didn't issue a single pardon during his two terms before Governor Evers defeated him in 2018. The move comes after applicants spoke to Governor Evers' pardon advisory board on January 14th. A bipartisan group of prominent Wisconsin business leaders is voicing support for elections administrator Megan Wolf. Republicans have called for a resignation and pursued investigation into how the 2020 election was conducted. The Elections Commission fighting a subpoena it received seeking a vast array of data and a private interview with Wolf. Wolf has refused to resign and has called the attacks against her baseless. She was appointed director by the commission in 2019 and confirmed unanimously by the Republican-controlled Senate for a term ending in the middle of 2023. Amazon is proposing a giant new warehouse in Cottage Grove, but the neighbors aren't sold. Amazon wants to build a 650,000 square foot building on 145 acres of land just north of I-94 at highways TT and N. Today, the CEO of the Madison Regional Economic Partnership and a real estate representative held a public hearing about the idea. They talked about the proposal, what it would look like, and how the warehouse would operate. Neighbors asked about what it could mean for property values. The project managers argued it could make them increase. Once these facilities are operational, it's actually the inverse. Um, property values continue to rise, and it really falls down to kind of a simple economic play of supply and demand dynamics. You have a constrained supply of these homes, increased people entering the workforce and the uh, ancillary businesses around that also contribute to the increased demand. Neighbors also brought up concerns about more traffic in the area. The village says Amazon would pick up the cost of any improvements they'd need. There's still more ahead on News 3 Now at 6, including the lucky Wisconsin couple claiming that huge Powerball jackpot from January. Plus, sturgeon spears are getting ready for the upcoming season. Why fishing experts say it could be a long season for them this year. Stay with us.
launching Madison's fastest growing newscast. News 3 Now at 6. Rest comfortably with brands you can trust at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Create a unique and stylish room with made-in-the-USA products from companies like Smith Brothers of Burn. Select from a wide variety of sofas at a great price. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. You're a hard worker. Provide for your family. Do good things in the community. Help out your neighbors. You've been there for so many others. Now... We're here for you. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. that angels built. Attic Angels Senior Living Community is built on a foundation of authentic local care, a framework for living well, windows to take in the beautiful future, and is crowned by the pride that one's home is one's castle. This is the house that angels built. Attic Angel Community, independent homes and four levels of assisted living, built with the help of angels. Experience handcrafted and hand-finished furniture by genuine Amish craftsmen at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Featuring hardwood made in the USA home furnishings by Simply Amish and other great brands you can trust. Bring quality home at Wanaki Furniture ETC. The 2022 Sturgeon Spearing season begins Saturday with more than 12,000 license holders ready to take to the Lake Winnebago system. With recent population estimates just over 41,000 adults, the Lake Winnebago system has one of the largest lake sturgeon populations in the world. The lake is only about 20 feet deep, so water clarity is key to a successful season. DNR senior fisheries biologist Aaron O'Connell says seasonal strong winds, open water, and light Light snow cover on Lake Winnebago could lead to more algae blooms and lower water quality this year. We found average water clarity around 10.7 feet, just under 11 feet, which is below that 12 foot threshold that we usually see uh, shortened seasoned uh, if it's over 12 feet. So we are expecting a, a lower harvest this year and potentially a longer season. The season begins at 7 a.m. Saturday. It runs 16 days or until the safe harvest caps are reached. Well, the Wisconsin Lottery says a northeastern Wisconsin couple is claiming half of the $632.6 million Powerball jackpot that was won last month. Tammy and Cliff Webster, who live in Oneida, won roughly $316 million of the jackpot from the January 5th drawing. The other winning ticket sold out in California. The couple taking the cash option, $225 million. According to the lottery, after state and local taxes, they will take home nearly $154 million. Coming up, a club in southeastern Wisconsin teaching people how to play a unique winter sport you've probably only seen in the Olympics. Plus, a massive study on the COVID vaccine looks to ease some cancer patients' hesitancy. What researchers learned. And temperatures on the rise. Could we actually see rain later this week? Your complete forecast after the break. President's Day is the best time to buy furniture, and Slumberland Furniture is having one of their biggest sales of the year. Wow. Wow is right. Deals up to 50% off throughout the store. The huge President sale at Slumberland Furniture. I was a Navy submariner for over 20 years. I spent a large portion of my life underwater. Service is about putting your country before yourself. But Senator Ron Johnson uses his office to serve himself. Ron Johnson passed a special tax break that benefited his family's business, then cashed out of the company for $5 million. Ron Johnson has doubled his wealth since he's been elected. That's not what service is about. Tell Ron Johnson to stop voting for tax laws that benefit himself. Important health care announcement. 
If people tell you your TV is too loud, or if listening in some environments has become difficult, we are requesting your participation in a special program called the 30-Day Challenge. Hearing Life Hearing Centers are seeking people with hearing difficulties to evaluate a new digital mini hearing aid now being released. To take part in this event, you must call. Please get a pencil and write down the number below. All people with hearing aids or hearing difficulties are wanted to take part in the 30-day challenge evaluating a new high-tech device that sits discreetly behind your ear. This hearing aid is Bluetooth enabled and is rechargeable. All hearing assessments are performed at no charge for those taking part in the challenge. Participants will try these hearing aids for 30 days. Call the number below and take the Hearing Life 30-day challenge. Govan Cars is having a huge winter sale with the largest selection of vehicles under $15,995 or $249 per month. That's right, don't miss out on our winter sale with the best selection of SUVs, cars, or vans under $15,995 or $249 per month. We have one of the largest selections of vehicles in Dane County with over 500 vehicles in stock. So just come on in and ask for me, Crystal the Pistol, Govan. Go to Govan Cars East or West. You gotta go to Govan. GovanCars.com President's Day is the best time to buy furniture and mattresses. And Slumberland Furniture is having one of their biggest sales of the year. Get an 8-inch Foam Queen mattress for just $222. Slumberland Sleep Solutions. We've reinvented mattress shopping. The largest study to date confirms the COVID vaccine is safe for people being treated for cancer or who have finished cancer treatment. Stephanie Stahl has the details. Dan Burkus has been receiving treatment for prostate cancer while trying to avoid COVID-19. What has it been like dealing with COVID and a pandemic and also being a cancer patient? Well, um, if you have cancer, you have a compromised immune system. So I was very happy to get the vaccine. Some cancer patients have had concerns about possible reactions to the vaccine, especially while having treatment, including chemotherapy, radiation, and immunotherapy. Now, the largest study to date is providing even more reassurance. What the study showed was, in fact, cancer patients are no different than non-cancer patients in how they react to these vaccines, and that it really, it absolutely is safe. Dr. Eric Horowitz at Fox Chase Cancer Center is the lead author of the research that looked at more than 1,700 people who received the Pfizer vaccine. People undergoing active cancer treatment or who had completed treatment experienced common short-term side effects such as pain at the injection site, fever, headache, and fatigue at similar rates as those without cancer. People who got all different therapies and everyone did well. So if you need even extra information to, to help in, in your decision to be vaccinated, th hopefully this will help. Dan got a COVID booster in September. In addition to uh, the vaccine, we practice the measures of masking in public places. Uh, we do keep our social bubble, so to speak, uh, relatively small. He's been in a clinical trial for the past two years, and right now his cancer is undetectable. Stephanie Stahl, CBS News, Philadelphia. About 18% of patients receiving the vaccine in the study were undergoing active treatment. Well, maybe he thinks the temperature's above freezing this week. Here's Gary with a complete look at your forecast. Temperatures are on their way up, but we're going to see these up and down temperature swings over the next 10 days, just like we've seen the last few days. We should be in the 30s for tomorrow and Wednesday, back to the upper 20s on Thursday, then into the upper 30s on Friday, down into the teens on Saturday, and then a slow climb with temperatures back into the 30s by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week before dropping back into the 20s toward the end of next week. Three things you need to know in our forecast. Look for mild weather with highs in the upper 30s tomorrow, middle 30s on Wednesday. Could be some snow showers Wednesday, then again Thursday night. Both of those systems bringing less than an inch of snow, if that. And then we'll see a period of dry weather for this weekend and for the first couple of days of next week. As we look at Doppler track right now, just a few snow flurries up in the uh, over the western end of Lake Superior and then the typical lake effect snows on the other side of Lake Michigan. Temperatures right now are in the teens and 20s here. Look what happens on the other side of a warm front. Temperatures in the 50s across much of the plains. There's a reason for that. That area has very little snow cover on the ground. In fact, almost all of South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, almost no snow cover there. So that allows the ground to heat up. That 
temperature uh, swing allows the area that has the snow cover to stay colder. The area that doesn't have the snow cover stays warmer. The jet stream kind of sets up in between. And as we've seen so often this winter, our upper level winds are from the northwest. That brings down periodic shots of cold air, although the bulk of the coldest air stays to the east of us. And the weather systems that come in don't bring a lot of snow with them because when you have a northwesterly wind flow aloft, that those weather systems come out of Canada instead of being able to get near the Gulf of Mexico and picking up moisture. So that's why we seen our below normal uh, snowfall continue and that probably will continue for a while longer. But as we look at the Midwest, you can see the dividing line is that warm front here. Our side of the front temperatures are seasonably cold. The other side of that warm front temperatures are much warmer. Notice teens, 20s here. 40s across western Iowa into South Dakota, some 50s in Nebraska, so it is quite a bit milder there. Wind chills really aren't as much of a factor either. The winds are out of the south, but they're pretty light right now. Those winds will pick up a little bit, but with temperatures in the 30s, the wind chill isn't nearly as noticeable. You can see winds out of the south tomorrow, temperatures climb into the 30s, some clouds, maybe a couple of flurries tomorrow night, a couple of snow showers on Wednesday, shouldn't amount to very much. There is a wind shift to the northwest on Wednesday that will drop our temperatures back into the upper 20s for Thursday before the next weather system arrives. Arrives. That will be probably uh, Thursday night into Friday and noticing snow showing up in parts of, uh, of uh, Minnesota, but notice where the accumulating snow will be up in northern Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, southern Wisconsin, less than an inch of snow. And again, that's Thursday night into early Friday morning. For tomorrow, variably cloudy skies, but a milder day, high temperature at 37 and the 7 to 10 day forecast 36 on Wednesday, chance for a few snow showers. The best chances for any accumulating snow would be Thursday night. And again, you saw less than an inch expected some rain and snow showers on Friday. Temperatures turn a little colder for the start of the weekend, warm up next week, and maybe some light snow chances Wednesday and Thursday of next week. All right, Gary, thank you. As the Winter Olympics continue in Beijing, many in the U.S. are being introduced to curling for the first time. Of course, most Wisconsinites know it well, even if they only watch it during the Olympics. In Heartland, the Kettle Moraine Curling Club is giving people the chance to try it out, and people of all ages are eligible to play. Froka Laos picked up curling eight years ago at a Learn to Curl event. She's been hooked ever since. It's really awesome, like it's a, it's a great community, like we just love like hanging out with friends. It makes the winter go by so much faster um, to have like an activity. During these clinics, you learn everything from uh, how to, everything you need to know to get on the ice and have a good time to sign up for a Learn to Curl clinic. You can visit that club's website. Of course, the Madison Curling Club also has lessons from time to time. Less than a day away from the top 20 rematch between Wisconsin and Michigan State. The Badgers fully ready to avenge the loss they suffered just a couple weeks ago. We're going to hear from the team coming up next in sports. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Hey everybody, it's me. Overture February 22nd through 27th. Tickets at Overture.org. Stop into Menards today and give your bathroom that much-needed update. Bister creates thoughtfully designed faucets and fixtures that fit perfectly into your life. And Spot Defense keeps your faucet shining like new. Right now, save big on a new Fister faucet. Whether you're working from home or relaxing for the evening, Sylvania True Wave bulbs mimic natural sunlight and deliver superior dimming control. Pick up a four-pack of dimmable LED light bulbs for just $7.99. Save big money at Menards. Water is one of nature's most beautiful and life-sustaining resources. At no fault of their own, many Wisconsin utility customers are facing a shutoff to their water service. This leaves them without the one life-giving resource we all take for granted. And those hardest hit are on fixed incomes, juggling multiple temporary jobs, or those who lost full-time jobs in sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. If someone you care about needs a hand up, your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your water, heat, and power on. If you are in danger of losing your water service, call 833-H2O-WISC, 833-426-9472. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help.
At iMart Express, it's just the right price. Two pairs of glasses start under 40 bucks. Using insurance? We accept over a thousand plans, and using your benefits is as easy as one, two, three. No insurance? No problem. Glasses to fit your budget. It's just the right price. Only at iMart Express. Hey, everybody. It's me, Tracy Turnblad, from Hairspray, Broadway's Tony Award-winning best musical, and we're dancing our way to your city. Don't miss Hairspray. At Overture, February 22nd through 27th. Tickets at Overture.org. In the current housing crunch, buyers will do just about anything to seal the deal. Our experts will have some smart tips and a warning about tricks that could backfire. And we have the latest plan your day forecast as you head out the door. That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. for the Wisconsin men's basketball team. The Badgers slid back three spots in the AP Top 25 to 14, but this team says it week in and week out. They aren't focused on the ranking. It's about improving and preparing for their next opponent, and in this case, the highly anticipated rematch, or as Greg Gard says, a retest with Michigan State. The last time out, Wisconsin had to do without Tyler Wall because of his ankle injury, and his presence was greatly missed on both ends of the court, so having him for this go-around is something he and the team are really looking forward to. It hurt to watch that game, you know, I really wanted to be out there, but I'm just hungry to get out there and kind of avenge that loss that we shouldn't have lost. Both offensive side of the floor and the defensive side of the floor, he does so much for us. He's a glue, glue guy in all the essence of the word. You know, he helps our unit defend. You know, defense isn't a one-person job, it's a five people out there. He does a lot for us, so um, definitely is a big piece of some of the things that we needed to clean up from that game, and so we're looking forward to having him out there with us and going to war. The Spartans also slid back in the rankings to this week to number 17. The top 20 matchup tips off in East Lansing tomorrow night at 6. The Wisconsin women's basketball team earns a bid to the 2022 U.S. Virgin Islands Paradise Jam Tournament. The tourney takes place in St. Thomas in November. This will be the Badgers' fourth appearance in the tournament. Back in 2008, they took home the championship. This weekend's battle of four and five ended in Wisconsin's favor. The Badgers put up five goals in their series finale with UMD. A series split helped UW jump up one spot in the rankings. And three of Saturday night's goals came off the stick of just one player. Daryl Watts earns forward of the week after posting her second hat trick of the season on Saturday, while also setting two goals in the Badgers game against the Tommies just last Monday. Watts is tied with Casey O'Brien for most goals and points on the team with 21 goals and 44 points. After a season of serious special team woes, the Packers might have finally found a solution. NFL Network's Ian Rappaport says the Green and Gold are expected to hire Raiders interim head coach Rich Basaccia to take over that position. Basaccia served as the Raiders special teams coordinator before being named interim head coach this past season, and this will be the Packers' third special teams coordinator in three seasons. Just last week, the team fired Maurice Drayton, who headed that position during the 2021 season, still waiting on official work from the Pack. Just, just and in case you missed it last night, the Bucks finished up the weekend making NBA history. They came, became the first team in league history to have all five of their starters score at least 15 points with five boards and two three-pointers. The Bucks extended their win streak to three games after beating the Clippers, 137 to 113. The Deers, the Deer face the Lakers tomorrow night at nine. Eric and Charlotte. Let's go back to Gary. Final check. With temperatures right now, upper teens to the lower 20s. Wind chills really not much of a factor. The winds are pretty light. Look for temperatures to drop to the middle teens by around midnight. Hold steady or even rise a bit overnight. And look for a high temperature tomorrow of 37 degrees. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.